So in the previous video, I just compared ints and strings and the different types and the operations we can do on them and a little bit of how the data is laid out uh, differently. Uh, now I want to define our own type. And I'm actually assuming at this point you understand classes and you've made some classes and probably did some polymorphism, which is fine. That's good. But now I want to take it to a little bit more of a deeper level. And so let's say class cow. Ooh, doesn't that feel so deep? Um, when I say class cow, I'm basically defining a type. Right? You're probably, hopefully at this point, you're used to defining functions like uh, public void moo. Right? And I have a fancy p method that allows me to console right line quickly. Alright, but I can say moo there. And here, let's say int num stakes. Alright, that's the number of stakes we can get out of our, our cow. And int, let's do moo count. Alright, and when we call moo, we should probably increment the moo count. Let me... Uh, put these on on line then at that point. Let me moo count plus plus. Um, let's say double. Uh, double. What's a good double? -ish, double pounds maybe the number of pounds of meat inside of our cow. And I could define a constructor to store these values, but I uh, I don't want to. Let's let's just keep this simple. I'm going to hold down the control key and scroll my mouse wheel back a little bit. Zoom out. All right. So we've defined a type of class cow. Right, and let's let's define let's uh let's create an instance of this thing. So cow Betsy, that's my typical cow name. Let's instantiate a cow and and now Betsy um I can't call like I showed on the previous video, I can't call two two upper on a Betsy, because two upper is a function that is not defined for a cow. Right? It is defined for a string, but it's not defined for a cow. It's not a legal operation for a cow. Alright, but I can call moo. Alright, let me call move there. That works just fine. The red squiggly's gone. Now, what does it mean when I... Well, first of all, that's that's a legal operation I can do. Now, what does it mean when I create a, a cow instance? Remember, this new, it goes out to the heap and grabs some room. So, let's say this is our stack, and we're stacking things up on here as the functions get called. And then we have this heap, alright? And out there I say new cow. Well, what exactly is going to happen when I say, hey, create a cow? The compiler, the jitter and the .NET compiler, they both have to consider, well, what is the, we got a cow here, right? and it is made up of an int, that's 32 bits, and another int, that's 32 bits, and a double, that's 64 bits. So really, when I'm saying new cow, I'm really saying int, int, double. Right? Give me enough room on the heap, right? enough room, here's 32 bits for an int, there's another 32 bits for an int, and here's 32 and here's 32. Both of these combined will make up the double where we will store the weight of our cow in pounds. Alright, and then when I say moo here on Betsy, alright, I'm going to increment moo count here. So let's see, I'm gonna erase all this. Let's let's uh let's go a little farther with this example. We got Betsy here, and Betsy is a new cow, and let's make um cow I think Georgie is the other name I like to use in my video. So I got Betsy and Georgie, and I say Betsy.moo, and moo, again, is a legal operation on a cow. All right, and let's say, hey, uh, Betsy, let's let's moo twice for you. All right, and then Georgie, let's moo, and I think Georgie, let's have him moo four times. All right, I'll actually put that. Well, you know what, let's put this... Down there, control L, control V, V. We'll have Georgie Moo a total of six times. One, two, three, four, five, six times. All right. Now, this is, this is critical to understand because now we're dealing with instances, which hopefully is not a new concept to you at this point. You should be familiar with instances of objects. But when I say, hey, Betsy gets a new cow, again, that goes out to the heap land, wherever it decides to, whatever the heap allocation algorithm is, and it says, okay, here's enough room for Betsy, and... Uh, this will be Betsy's num stakes. I'll put an NS out here. And this will be Betsy's moo count. Alright, and then these 64 bits down here, I'll do a dashed line there. These 64 bits down here will be the pounds. Alright, the pounds of, of Betsy. And so now Betsy is the reference. Alright, this reference is sitting on the stack. And it has the address of this object down on the heap. And, and, 
And here, here's our new cow. And remember, in .NET land, when you new up an instance of an object and you don't assign any default values here, they will all default to zero. So there's all of our zeros. Okay. Well, Georgie, new cow, same thing. All right. We need room out here for Georgie. Let's put him over here. Here's here is Georgie. All right. And and you know what? I said in a previous video, the type of an object defines the layout. All right, well, Georgie is a cow as well. So his layout is going to be identical to what Betsy is. He will have a num stakes up here. All right, and then a, a moo count right here, like so. And then, and then the pounds will be right here. All right, and that is Georgie. And Georgie, this reference, will point to that object. Again, it's an address of where this thing is located in RAM. It's not really a physical arrow, so to say. Uh, the default values again zeros, zeros, and zeros. And then I say Betsy dot moo, Betsy dot moo. Well, that's each time I do a moo here, I'm calling the dot. The dot means do it on Betsy, All right? So here's Betsy dot moo, All right? And when I call moo, that's going to increment moo count here. So let's go to Betsy's moo count right there, and the first moo will send it to a one. And then the second moo will say, hey, moo count plus plus again. That'll send it to a two. All right. Now, Georgie, we do it six times. So if you can imagine moo count the first time, it goes to a one. And then the second time, it goes to a two, like so. And and uh, the third time, it'll go three, four, five. Eventually, it'll increment all the way up to six. All right. But it's important. Now, hopefully, that that wasn't rocket science by any means. It's... It's the plus plus operator, and we're operating on individual instances of an object. That shouldn't be anything new. But the thing to take away from this is moo is a legal operation on a cow, okay? And then when I make a cow the, at runtime, the heap has to say, okay, well, what does a cow look like, and what are the individual parts of a cow going to be? And and so it looks at the structure and says, oh, we got an int, an int, and a double. So here we go, int, int, and a double. And oh, we want to make another one. Here's an int, int, and a double. All right, I hope that hope that makes sense. So let's do um let's do an even more simpler type uh, class cat. All right, and uh, just real simple. I'm going to say uh, public int num. Actually, we don't even need public int num lives. All right, I guess cats start out with nine or something. We could even default it to nine. Why not? This cat will start out with nine. So let me um. Now that we got a, uh, oh, I got all these scribbles all over the screen. I have a cat with nine lives, and what do I say, cat here? And I'll say our cat muffin. And he gets new cat. All right. Well, again, the uh, at runtime, uh, the heap allocating algorithm has to say, oh, you want a new cat? Uh, there's room over here. Let's see what's in a cat. A cat has one int, so a cat's not nearly as big as a cow as far as the data is concerned. So here's our cat. This is the number of lives for our cat. And just to keep the arrows consistent, I'll line this back up there. And then uh, Muffin is going to point to this instance out on the heap. All right? Muffin, the actual word Muffin here is a variable on the stack that stores the address to this cat instance out on the heap. Now, again, we're talking about types. Since I instantiated a cat, that basically means one int. All right, that's that's all that had to be put there as far as the heap's concerned. And then I can't further say cat dot oops or muffin. All right, I can't say muffin dot moo. All right, moo is an operation that is not defined for cat. It's defined for cow, but it's not defined for cat. All right, but perhaps I could say uh, a public void meow instead. All right, and then we could have a meow count or something like that. But now that I have the, oh, sorry, let me get that lined up again. Now that I have the meow method, I can certainly come down here and say dot meow. That is now a operation that is defined for a cat. All right, so this is probably, I'm probably beating a dead horse, but it's critical to understand. Yeah, we can make these classes, and we can instantiate these things, and we can tell them to do stuff. But really, down at the low, low, low level, I mean, when I say cow, I'm saying int, int, double. And even when I say int, int, I'm saying 32 bits, 32 bits, double. And when I say int, we're going to interpret these bits a lot different than we're going to interpret floating, interpret a floating point 
value in RAM. So even these types are a little bit of an abstraction on top of the actual bits. All right, and and cat cat has a different memory layout or memory footprint than a cow does. All right, and then obviously the operations that are legal on a cow are not the on a cat are not the same as the operations that we can do on a cow. So there's two things to keep in mind there as far as types and layouts are concerned and that sort of thing. So so I I hope you learned from that.